Hey, Cedar Valley, uh, Pastor Doug and Pastor Rob here, talking about missional, neighborhood-centric, and bubbled small groups. There we go. What, what, what is that, Doug? Well, you know what, we wanna to gather together in our homes, church at home, small groups, and missional just means we're caring for one another within the group, but also for those that live maybe just down the street yeah. or just uh, on the other block. Yeah. It doesn't have to be actually the literal neighbor next door. It can be within that neighborhood, right? That's what we're thinking, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's bubbled mean? Bubbled, well, we want to stay safe. And so some of you probably already have a bubble family or through school or maybe okay. even through church. A safe, small group that you can regularly connect with in a reasonable distance. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping protocols like uh, hand washing. How about foot washing? Can we do that? That's biblical, isn't it? It's biblical. Not a required COVID protocol, okay. but I like where you went there. Uh, if people are more comfortable wearing masks, is that a good idea? I think so. In their yes. space, in their homes, outside or inside their homes, that's good, okay. Any other six foot distance, I guess? If we need to be. Unless, yeah. of course, you're a couple, you can be on the couch together kind of thing. I sure hope so. Yeah. <laughs> How about, um, how do I join one of these? Wow, how do they join one of these? That's a great question. How would you join a small group like we're describing? Well, I get, there's a couple of ways. You can call the church. You can uh, use your directory and search through that to, to find who might be in your neighborhood and just go and talk to them. Like, why not, right? Exactly. Pretty organic. It's not um, hard. You can, you can literally walk down your neighborhood and be praying maybe even as you're walking for your neighborhood, but certainly be looking to figure out who is in the area. And if you don't find anyone in your area, go to your directory and make some calls. And if that doesn't work, then call us because we are accumulating that data and we'll let you know who's where and how many are already in those groups. So give us a call at the church. You can talk to any one of our pastors and we have that information yeah. between us. And if they live even just a little bit out of town, well, I'm sure a few people won't mind driving out to your place. It'll be a great time to get together. Yeah, so come now, on down to Chilliwack. Just kidding. If, I'm hoping we'll have some places closer to Mission than Chilliwack. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> leaders. Yeah. Um, how are we gonna find leaders for these things? What does it take to be a leader of church at home small group. Yeah, so we're really trying to decentralize that because we, I think we have a sense that in the past, leadership is, uh, the burden of leadership has been maybe a deterrent for some people to, to lead a group. So what we're really looking for are people who would host the group. And then within the group, adults, we're inviting you to have conversations around the questions that we're gonna have and maybe even some responses to post service that doesn't really require any training or really even anyone to lead it so much as just have the conversation. And really what it does require though is an internet connection <laughs> and a TV so you can watch it together and you have something to discuss. So right? if you have an internet connection with a TV, you could be a leader. Sure, good. Bingo, go. well said. Yeah. Yeah. What's gonna happen in these groups though, Doug? Like what's, what's beyond that, what's gonna happen? Well, Specifically, if you're watching our live stream, which is broadcast on Sunday, but you could watch it any day of the week That's when right. you gather, yeah. um, you're gonna have opportunity to discuss uh, the content of the messages and how that applies to you, your neighborhood, um, your friends, your family. And so that's gonna kick it off, as well as you can spend time caring and praying for one another and also yeah. those in your community, but that's not all. But there's more? There is more, yes. Tell me more. This gives you the chance, <laughs> together as a group on your street yeah. or collectively in your neighborhood, to think outside your room, the box of your house. To, what can we do for our neighbors? Yeah. Even little things like maybe groceries. Maybe you can start by praying for them, encouraging them somehow um, so you can reach out. Here's the missional part of mm -hmm. what you could be doing. Mm -hmm. And, and it, can, it can be within your neighborhood. I think that's what we're encouraging you. But it could even be from an office space. A coworker has a need and mm -hmm. you say, okay, hey, we'd, we'd like to help you meet that need in your, in your coworker's life, for yeah, instance. For sure. Yeah, you know what? It's unlimited. It really, the only limitation is what you can think of together. And we're looking forward to seeing how these groups throughout Mission are gonna impact the, our community. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. You have a question for me? I do. Um, why this model of small groups? What's the deal with that? That's in our script. That's perfect. <laughs> it actually is. So uh, why this small group model? 
because it gives people a way to meet face to face in a safe environment, which is something we all have been craving. It, it's a good balance between inward caring for each other and outward, which I think we need to work on a little bit as a church. Now, what if you're oh, adults wow. and you've got some kids? Uh, can that work together? Oh, do you have a question? Do you have an answer for that? Because I don't have, I don't have an answer to that question. <laughs> well. I partly do, and that's something that we're working on here at Cedar Valley is we want to make these groups very intergenerational. So while adults right. are talking about maybe the message, the children will have an opportunity to connect as well mm -hmm. through some of the teaching at their level, but they can also be a part of dreaming. Kids are great dreamers. Yeah. yeah. Remember that yeah. way back when? Yeah. About what they can do in the community. So yes. It's for everyone. I love it. It's intergenerational. And because we have such a nice swath from very young to older, it's a great opportunity to connect those two uh, demographics. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Last, now, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, what about groups that have been meeting in the past? We've had some oh, yeah. ladies groups that have been meeting for activities, men's group and for care and for study. Uh, what's going to happen with these that have already been established um, with these new groups? Yeah. groups? That's a really fair question, as we're not interested in dismantling those groups per se, uh, like men's ministry, women's ministry, we would encourage that along. But I think you would agree, I think you would agree that there's only so much time and, and energy and resource to pour into these things. And we're, we're actually shouldering our efforts as staff and as leadership towards these missional small groups for the reasons that we've already talked about. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Church at home, small groups, Cedar Valley. There's one thing we neglected to say, along with the leaders, um, you're just not gonna be out there on your own. We are going to encourage you and connect with you, and we'll just kind of make a network of hosts and leaders throughout our small group ministry here at Cedar Valley. Love it, sounds great. Thanks Cedar Valley. Uh, so sign up as soon as possible, and uh, we look forward to interacting with you uh, in that small group ministry. See you in small group.